Well, good evening. Uh, thank you for tuning in for midweek service by YouTube. We appreciate uh, so much the ability to come to you this way during all this heat and such. Uh, and so uh, anyhow, we'll get right into it. I love you. I appreciate you in the Lord. Take your Bibles. Turn to Romans chapter 10, please. Romans chapter number 10. We're continuing our study in the book of Romans. And uh, we're going to be looking at verses 14 uh, through 17 tonight. Romans chapter 10, verses 14 through 17. The Bible says, How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah saith, Lord, who hath believed our report? So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing uh, by the word of God. Let's pray, Father, bless our time together. I pray, Father, that you would open our eyes, help us to see this truth. Uh, Lord, hide it in our hearts that we might not sin against you. Encourage our hearts to be evangelistic. Uh, give us a heart for souls and help us to be mindful, Father, of the great need for us to be proclaimers of the Word of God in these dark days we're living in. Empty me of self, cleanse me of sin, fill me with our spirit. God will give you glory for what you do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Last week, uh, we looked at um, verses 6 through 13 and looking at salvation plain and simple. And with this emphasis being made on salvation plain and simple that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Um, tonight we want to look at these verses that give us this mission mandate that, that, that gives us a plea for gospel proclamation. Um, and so for us as believers, we're to be constantly proclaiming the gospel. Uh, the gospel must be proclaimed. It must be verbally spoken. And um, yes, I, in there, that there is good in handing out gospel tracts. Uh, it is good to uh, give people the Bible. Uh, but it is also important according to this passage of scripture that we verbally communicate the gospel to people because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So this passage drives home uh, the utter uh, necessity of witnessing. And so we, we need to be reminded of that. This hits the practical side of the doctrines that we have uh, been studying together. And so the first thing that I want you to see tonight is real, real simple. We need to see the necessity of gospel preaching or got the necessity of gospel proclamation. It's very important. We, we need to get this. It is a necessity because verse 14 and the first part of verse 15, uh, I believe it asks four questions. Four questions that we uh, need to get a handle on. And the four questions are, how, verse 14 and verse first part of verse 15, how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? That's the first question. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? How are they going to call on somebody they do not know? And how are they going to believe that he's their only hope if they have not heard of him? Second question that's presented to us, and it says, And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? So how are they going to call on him when they have not believed in him? And how are they going to believe in him when they've not heard of him. Third question. How shall they hear without a preacher? The word preacher here is, 
it, it, in the Greek, it means one who heralds, one who proclaims. So this is the idea of somebody with a message, somebody that will proclaim the Word of God. Not just a pastor, evangelist, or missionary, but just an ordinary child of God, saved by the grace of God, as they go out witnessing, proclaiming the gospel. This is the... People need this. We need to be the voice in our day. Telling everybody about somebody who can take a nobody and make them somebody by the grace of God. Plain and simple. And the fourth question is, how shall they preach except they be sent? So all this is just exclusively uh, Speaking of pastors, evangelists, missionaries, etc., we'll see about that. So the reality of this first question, how then shall they call on him on whom they have not believed? They must first believe before they call because until they believe, they see no need to call. You see, that? see, see what he's driving home right here? And so faith in Christ is necessary prior to them calling on Christ. See, the real problem in our day, people don't think they need to be saved. The problem in our day, people think they're okay. They're doing okay compared to everybody else, but they're, not, they're missing the point just like the Jews did in previous lessons uh, that we've looked at. And so this requires us uh, to be diligent and faithful to the scriptures uh, and for us to really present the whole counsel of God. Before we give them the good news, they need to know the bad news. They're dead in trespassing sins. Their righteousness is as filthy rags that they are separated from God without hope in this present world outside of Christ. But if they'll believe and repent of their sins and call on Christ and confess Him with their mouth, they can be saved. Uh, but we have learned how to just give the good news without giving the bad news. And they say, oh great, how convenient it is that I have a Savior who come to the cross, died in my place, was buried and raised again the third day, and all I've got to do is call on Him. I've done that. I go my way, live my life, and that's all there is to do. See, sadly, that's the misrepresentation uh, even here in America. So we need to be mindful that these people need to believe so that they call. And we must labor this point. They need to see their need for Christ. Oh, yes, he is the Savior. He is the Son of God. And therefore, I need him. And as a result of me realizing I need him, I then call on him. So the second question is this. And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? So if they have not heard of this biblical Jesus, the God of the Bible, if they've not heard of him, how are they going to believe on him? You'd be surprised at how many people, even in America, even in Mississippi, in the Bible Belt in which we live, in our own communities, they really have never had anybody explain to them who the real Jesus is. And so, once again, Paul is laying down the foundation to realize those of us that are saved, the great responsibility that we have and the great privilege that we have to go out and to tell others about this Savior who saved us. And so they, they must hear the truth in order to believe. So we must stop being silent. We need to speak up. And if you're shy and timid, you need to pray God give you boldness as they did in Acts 4. We need some bold church members today. We need some bold preachers. We need some bold Christians who will stand up and proclaim, herald out the message of the gospel. The third question is, is, and how shall they hear without a preacher? How are they going to hear without somebody to proclaim? 
How are sinners going to hear without God having a voice in our day? Mm -hmm. and, and, and this word preacher is the word we get herald, uh, announcer, somebody who proclaims. And it means to uh, one who proclaims loud and clear the message. And see, this is what the world needs. They need somebody who will be loud and clear with the gospel presentation. They need this. They need to hear this. And the fourth, how shall they preach except they be sent? And so Acts 1, 8 settles it for me when it says, and ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you and ye shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the world. So what happened is, when the Holy Spirit came, the church got sent out. You, you go out. There's 120 in the upper room. They come down, Peter preaches, 3,000 get saved, and then they begin to spread out to some extent, not in full, because Acts 8, nobody's wanting to leave Jerusalem, so God has to send persecution to get the church to go out, to go out and be witnesses. This is more than just a proof. As a member of a church, when you go out on your day-to-day -day basis, you are representing Jesus Christ and the church you attend. And you've been given authority by the Holy Spirit and the Word of God to be a voice for Christ. This ain't just for the preacher. This ain't just for the Sunday school teacher. This ain't for somebody who's, who's just, a, uh, you know, a fanatic. This is for everybody. And if you are saved, you are saved, you'll want to share the gospel with others. Um, this is the only hope in our generation is that the church would wake up and get busy for Christ and get busy proclaiming the gospel, the good news, the glad tidings of Jesus Christ that he has come to seek and to save that which is lost. And then we have the privilege to show them why they're lost and how they're lost. And the only way out of this is by repentance and faith toward God. May I say this, that God has chosen the foolishness of preaching to save them that are lost. God has chosen preaching, proclamation of the truth to save those that are lost. Now, notice the second part of verse 15. This brings me to the second point. Here is the beauty of gospel preaching. Listen to the word he says here. And it is written, How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. He, he quotes Isaiah 52 right here. So I want to go over to Isaiah chapter 52. Isaiah chapter number 52. And we're going to be looking at verse 7 through 10. Isaiah 52, verse number 7. He says, How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of them that bring good tidings, that publish peace, and that bringeth, that bringeth good tidings of good, that publish salvation, that saith unto Zion, Thy God reigneth. Thy watchmen shall lift up the voice with the voice together shall they sing for they shall see eye to eye when the Lord shall bring again Zion break forth into joy sing together ye waste places of Jerusalem for the Lord hath comforted his people he hath redeemed Jerusalem the Lord hath made bare his holy arm in the eyes of all the nations and, and the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. And it's just not contained in Jerusalem. He says how beautiful are the feet are of those that bring the message. 
Ephesians 6 and 15, when he's speaking of putting on the whole armor of God, he said, have your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. And so the, the, the beauty that sinners, believing sinners, find in the feet of the messenger that brought the message of salvation to them. They said, oh, how beautiful are those feet. Those feet came my way and they are forever grateful to God that God sent you to them with the truth and they believed the message and were gloriously born into the family of God. Do you understand how, how that is? See, everybody that has been saved, there's somebody God used in your life that took time to tell you the truth, that gave you the truth, that preached, proclaimed the truth, and that person is special to you. And you, how beautiful are those feet that they would come your way. And it's the fact that somebody cares enough to tell you the truth. And share the good news of the gospel with him. The overwhelming fact that God sent us out in the world to proclaim and herald the message of hope and salvation to the world and to every creature. And for those that hear the message and believe, they are thankful somebody cared enough to tell them. I heard the testimony of an atheist. He says, he says, the greatest form of hate is to know the truth and have the truth and refuse to share it with others. And this atheist said, I'm an atheist because of so many professing Christians that never speak up and never share the gospel with the world that needs it. And he said, if there was anything to what they say they believed, they would be sharing it with everybody. And that's a strike at us because we need the Lord's help to help us, to fill us, to use us, and to give us this boldness to herald this message. Uh, the third point is found in verse 16. So uh, we have seen the necessity of, of gospel preaching. We see the beauty of gospel preaching and now the tragedy of the of gospel preaching. It, it is a tragedy because verse 16 contrast those that received it because they said, How beautiful are the feet of those that did bring. Uh, notice what it says. How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace. See, everybody in our world, and let, let's, let's go back and deal with verse 15 a little more in, de in depth here. He says, them that preach the gospel of peace, there is a world looking for peace right now. We have peace. We have a message of peace. You need to be at peace with God. Romans 5, one, therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God. And you've got to believe. You've got to repent. You must receive Christ. You must confess Christ. And as a result of that, you're justified. You're at peace with God. And then, after you're at peace with God, as His child, you now have the peace of God that passes all understanding that will keep your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. And He says, And bring glad tidings of good things. The good news of the gospel is people know they're messed up. But when you magnify how messed up they are and see that Christ is willing to save, Christ is willing to forgive, and that would cause, that's enough truth to cause sinners to come and be, and give their life to Christ. But verse 16, he contrasted with this conjunction, but it says, but they have not obeyed. They have have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah said, Lord, who hath believed our report? Let me just clear some water up real here, real, right here. The gospel is not an invitation. 
The gospel is a command. Yes, we invite sinners to come. Christ invites sinners to come. But he invites after he commands them to come. He commands. Acts 17, he commands all men everywhere to repent. He has called and commanded sinners to come to Him. But they have not all obeyed. You see, through preaching, the preaching of the gospel, we do more than invite men to come. We command men to come. You need to repent. You need to believe. You need to confess Christ. You need to commit yourself to Christ. These are actions we're to compel men to action. We're not just to give them information and say, all right, hope you make the right choice. No, we, we compel. This is what God is saying. This is what God is demanding. And your soul's at stake. And the only hope for you is you'll repent and you'll come to Christ. And the tragedy is, everybody we share the gospel with is not going to obey the gospel. They're not going to come. And that's the tragedy. God demands obedience. And when the gospel goes forth, God is speaking and He's issuing commands for sinners to come, repent, and believe. And say, so what if nobody does come? That's fine. You know, it... it, it People worry, I wonder if I had the right presentation. I wonder if I muddied things up for them. If you presented the truth to them. You're not called to make results. You're called to proclaim the truth. It's up to God to bring the results. We just must be faithful with the message God gave us. God will be faithful in calling those sinners individually and bringing them the faith in Christ. Isaiah said, who hath believed our report? And that's Isaiah 53, uh, 1. And he says, who, who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Well, when it gets personal, it's that individual coming, that individual receiving. And this goes back to John 6, 37. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me. That's God's part. All the Father has given to the Son, he said, shall come to me. And he says, and all that do come to me, I'll know why it's cast out. So that's, that's comfort. He says in Isaiah, my word will not return void. It will accomplish what I sent forth for it to do. And so let's get to the fourth and final thing tonight. It's verse 17. This is the glory of gospel preaching. Verse 17, so then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of of God. So notice what it says. Faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. So there's two things. The word of God is the faith builder. And the word of God must be verbally heralded. Verbally proclaimed. And when the word of God is verbally and loudly and clearly proclaimed. It has the power to produce saving faith in that individual. James talks about that engrafted word. And that word engrafted means that implanted word. It means that God takes that word and he literally impregnates that faith into that sinner through that drawing, through the calling of the gospel and the drawing power of the Holy Spirit of God. And it brings that sinner to faith in Christ. The word must be claimed, proclaimed in order for it to be heard. And when it's heard, it produces faith. And it will be a faith that saves. This means he's taken unworthy sinners and saved them by his grace. Then he sends us back out into the world <laughs> to be lights in this world to be ambassadors, to herald the message of Jesus Christ, that Christ receiveth sinners. What we need to understand today, as 
we look at this text, we're reminded that God has saved us by His grace, set us free from the bondage of sin, and He's left us in this world to be witnesses for Him and to Him and through Him. And He's taken our lives and He's taken our voice and he's using it for his honor and his glory. So, by way of application, what is it? Don't hesitate to share the gospel this week. Don't hesitate to slip a gospel track. Don't hesitate to say, Hey, you got a minute? I'd like to talk to you. And walk them through the gospel. Show them what the Bible says. And one of my favorite uh, means of evangelism is using the Lord's example with the rich young ruler. He says, good master, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus issues some of the Ten Commandments to him. He says, oh, I've kept them since my youth. He said, but one thing you do lack. Like, Sell all you have, give you, give it all away, take up your cross and follow me. So here, here's what I want you to see. What did Jesus do? Jesus brought him to the law. At that moment, that, that individual wasn't willing to see himself as a sinner. But nonetheless, the law was brought that we line up Oh, I have. Ray Comfort does a wonderful job in going through that. So he goes to guy, the people on the street and he's, he's recording it for a means to be a help to other believers. He's talking to them. So if you died right now, you know where you would go just to open up the conversation. And this would be said and that would be said. And he says, well, let me tell you what God says. And he says, do you lie? Have you ever told a lie in your life? And then he, have you lusted? Have, and he just goes on and on and on. And the guy said, yeah, well, I, I'm not too good. And he says, based on that, where would you go? And they go, oh, I'd be, I would perish. I would, I'd be under the judgment. And he said, do you know that if you'll repent of your sins, turn from that and turn to Christ, believe in your heart God raised him from the dead and confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, you can be saved. And he said, and, the guy, and then the next question is, when, and he said, are you willing to do that? He said, yeah. And he said, so when? He says, right now. And this guy repents, makes public profession of faith. It's just that simple. Some people need to have it broke down for them in that manner. This is God's law. This is what we're going to be judged by. Are you guilty? And the answer is, yes, we're guilty. And because we're guilty... That means we can't save ourselves. We need Christ. The law is our schoolmaster to bring us to Christ. So this week, I challenge you, take time to share the gospel with some soul this week. May God bless us and keep us till we meet again. Love y'all. See y'all soon.